Good afternoon, everyone. As we gather on this Prize Day, we begin our time with prayer. Let's join together in prayer. A prayer for our school. Spirit of truth, may we find truth in our school through knowledge and sound learning. Spirit of beauty, may we find beauty in our school through music and the arts. Spirit of life, may we find life in our school through active participation. Spirit of love, may we find love in our school through caring and fellowship. Spirit of peace, may we find peace in our school. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. A prayer for those who teach. We thank you, O Lord, for those who devote their lives to the work of education in this school. May they do their work in humble dependence upon your grace. And may it be their constant endeavor not only to impart knowledge, but to build character and to equip the young people they teach with a firm faith, a courageous spirit, and a true sense of value for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Cookstown High School's Prize Day for 2021. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lynn Drips, and I'm chairperson of the Board of Governors. And it's lovely to see everybody here today. It's a very different prize day for us, but I'm absolutely de delighted that we were in a position to hold such an event and to welcome all of you who are joining us remotely, as well as in person here in Molesworth Church. And I would just like to thank my vice chair, the Reverend Tom Greer in the session for kindly allowing us to use the church and its technical facilities. We do really appreciate it. And I'd also like to welcome our special guest and speaker today, Dr. Rajan Bedi, former pupil and expert in all things space. As last year's prize day had to be canceled, Rajan was kind enough to agree to join us this year a year late, but we very much look forward to hearing about what he has been doing since he left school. And I can tell you, having spent an hour or more in his company uh, before we came down, you are going to be delighted and amazed at what he has been doing. As a school, we have produced pupils who have gone on to achieve highly in various fields, medicine, football, engineering, but I don't think we've got any other space entrepreneurs like Rajan, so we welcome you today. Since we last met for our prize day in September 2019, we have seen many new staff members join the team at Cookstown High School. The list is really too long for me to welcome all of them individually, but the governors do wish all of you who have joined us the very best and hope that you are settling in well. Governors are very proud of the staff we have here and truly believe that when we offer somebody a position in the school that we are employing the best. We also extend our best wishes to those staff who have taken time out this year to care for family or to expand their life experiences by teaching abroad. I will, however, uh, mention one new member of staff, um, particularly Mr. Andrew McGeown, who joined us last year as our new vice principal curriculum. He really has had to hit the ground running and uh, joining the school during this pandemic, but his knowledge and his love for this, his old school, has brought so much to our senior leadership team. This past 18 months has been a difficult time for everybody. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, the pupils, and your parents and guardians for the high level of engagement with your teachers and the way the high standards in teaching and learning were maintained. Wi-Fi and connectivity, remote and blended teaching, Teams, Zoom, etc., shared devices, algorithms, bubbles, masks, sanitizer, hand washing, social distancing, self-isolation, track and trace, and teacher-assessed grades. 
All of these words and terms that two years ago would hardly have been in our vocabularies or indeed the reality of our lives. Some of you will not have experienced Cookstown High School yet without the restrictions and won't have had the chance to enjoy all the extracurricular activities that are normally on offer. But we can only hope and pray that things will soon return to normal. And I want to thank every pupil for their, res their resilience, their perseverance, and to congratulate all of our prize winners being recognized today. And I also need to mention those young people who missed out on public recognition last year for their achievements, especially those who have moved on to further education or to work when we weren't able to hold prize day last year. It has been a very different 18 months for so many and we just want to recognize that today. Every school's success and reputation depends on its staff and its leadership. And we are so blessed with the team we have here. They have all heard me say before and during the pandemic, how much the governors appreciate their hard work and dedication. But I want to take this opportunity again today to publicly thank you all. Teaching methods and working practices had to change and adapt to the situation that unfolded. New skills and technology had to be taught and learned. And I want to thank you all for that willingness to adapt. Mrs. Kathy Johnson has to be given special mention for all she did to facilitate that and to problem solve for those staff who were maybe less tech savvy. Many phone calls were made between staff and families and emails were received and answered at times that were well outside of normal school days. I know the very positive comments made in the local community about how this school worked so hard during lockdown to keep excellent teaching, communication and support going. Our results this year have been outstanding and I know how much work went into that process of assessing grades. Some outside of school may say that grades were inflated, but I know that staff in Cookstown High School based every grade awarded on evidence and that our pupils deserved every result achieved. Well done, everybody. I must also thank our senior leadership team for whom the last 18 months have been an unprecedented time of uncertainty, last minute directions from the Department of Education and concern about keeping everybody safe. And I have to make particular reference to Miss Evans and the commitment she has made to this school. Cookstown High School has benefited much from her expertise and the real heart she has for our children and their futures. She genuinely believes that every child is of worth and that is so important in a school like ours and should be at the centre of everything that we do. So genuinely, I do want to thank all of our staff I must also thank my fellow governors who continued to serve the school so well during lockdown. When we couldn't meet in person, we held meetings over Zoom. We used this time to do a lot of basic housekeeping that nobody had had time to do in normal times. And the recruitment and selection subcommittee had to play catch up with interviews, doing some remotely, some in person. So I want to thank you all for the time you voluntarily gave up in service of this school community. Mine is supposed to be the short opening speech to welcome and to thank. And so I'm nearly finished, you'll be relieved to hear. But I just wanted to say that we have come through a very difficult period that we pray is starting to ease. I imagine that most people here have been affected in some way by COVID. Some because their education or work has been disrupted. Some because their financial security has been impacted. Some because they couldn't meet with a hug, the loved ones that maybe are in residential homes or in different countries. Some have suffered because of mental or physical health issues and others have indeed lost loved ones as my own family did. So all of us can empathize with each other. Every generation faces a time of catastrophe, I believe, and this has been ours. I don't know about you, but my faith kept me going through all of this. And I just want to tell you, I was listening to a song by a group called We Are Messengers. 
Now, it's not an old fuddy-duddy group. If you're thinking, looking at me, she probably listens to, to rubbish, but very good group. And the song was called Image of God. And if you get a chance, listen to it. It talks about the reality of each of us being one among over 7 billion and that we can still feel utterly alone. We can turn to our lives representing the symbol of modern life, but the world cannot fulfill our needs. Only God can do that. He is light, and as we are made in his image, every one of us, there is a little bit of that light within each of us. And I just want to finish by saying, remember to let that light shine out. We have all needed encouragement and hope during this time. And your smile or kind word might be the only positive interaction that somebody gets. Some shine brightly, others struggle to let that light escape. But know that no matter how young or old, no matter how many GCSEs you might have, you can make this school a place in which light and hope thrives. Do everything to the best of your ability, always with integrity and honesty, and you will shine. And as a result, those around you won't be lost in the darkness. So I hope you'll all enjoy being here this afternoon. I'm sure you're all very keen to get to the uh, actual presentation of the awards, but I'm going to hand over now to Miss Evans, the principal. Good afternoon, everyone. Madam Chairman, guest of honour, governors, parents, friends, teachers and prize winners. It gives me very great pleasure to welcome you to Cookstown High School's prize giving. And it is a pleasure and privilege to deliver the annual speech for the academic year 2020 to 2021. I'm also delighted to welcome Dr. Rajan Beatty, a past pupil of Cookstown High School. Dr. Beatty is a globally recognized space electronics authority, developing award-winning products and services for the global satellite industry. In 2020, Dr. Beatty won the Great British Disruptive Entrepreneur of the Year. And I think, Dr. Beatty, you may need to explain the meaning of the word disruptive in this context. As CEO of Space Chips, he leads the design and building of advanced electronic engineering for the satellite industry. And he also supports and advises global companies on how to develop their businesses. And we very much look forward to hearing to what Dr. Beatty has to say to us today. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Chair of Governors, Mrs. Drips, and our Board of Governors for their unshakable support during the challenges of the last two academic years, especially with the pandemic. The work of governors is essential, unpaid, and also invisible to most people. No head teacher could be better served by their governing body, but more importantly, no school could be better served by its governing body. And we are incredibly appreciative of all that you do for us, and we are grateful for your time, energy, expertise, and commitment. I'm immeasurably proud of my colleagues, and I have marveled at their resourcefulness, drive, and compassion during the current pandemic. They have moved proverbial mountains during recent months and have done so with grace and kindness, always seeking to go the extra mile to maximize learning opportunities for our pupils. And I am grateful to them and humbled by their service. The pupils, as ever, are credit to the school. And I've been impressed with the way in which they have managed, especially with online learning and the engagement with wider activities to help deepen and broaden their knowledge and skills. I want to pay tribute to our head boy, Joshua Glendinning, and head girl, Catherine Carson, who have carried out their roles and responsibilities enthusiastically and set a very high standards for future pre prefects. And of course, we are ever grateful for the steadfast support and understanding and confidence of our parents who continue to encourage and support the high school. 
I do not want to dwell upon the challenges of the last year and a half. However, I do want to share with you my admiration and courage, uh, the, my admiration for the courage and determination that all members of this community has shown. We've had to grow together, and through the most testing of times, it has been intense and difficult. But we emerge from the other side, and we will emerge from the other side of this crisis, knowing that we have only grown together, but we have thrived, and we are in a stronger position than we've ever been before. The community that we have is exemplary in every way, and we've come together to ensure that our pupils are cared for and achieve their personal best academically and personally. There is a lovely African proverb which says, it takes a village to raise a child which recognizes the part that the extended nature of our community has to play in the raising of a child. In the same way, schools have the privilege of contributing to part of a child's education. It is essential a unified school community ensures the highest educational standards and aspirations, enhancing opportunities and activities. Someone has said, unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. And that certainly can be said of the high school, unified and driven to provide the best educational provision for our young people. Today, we want to recognize and celebrate the achievements. A school founded upon Christian principles, we believe in and celebrate the uniqueness and achievements of everyone, regardless of their background, their ability, or experiences. The high school is a combined grammar and secondary school, which means that we have pupils across the academic range, and we are delighted to recognize all successes today. Despite the year that has been, we have some record-breaking A-level results and GCSE results. Our outgoing sixth form pupils have performed supremely well and secured positions at many excellent universities, apprenticeships and employment, and we wish them well. Parents, your work and encouragement for your children is fundamental to their success. And while the awards today are a reflection of their effort and character, it is also a reflection of your love and support. Prize winners, please realize you are always your parents' priority. And if you have parents who care enough to check your homeworks and your test scores and make you work hard and revise, then you are immensely privileged. I am delighted to announce that our performance in the GCSE, Summer AS and A-Level um, examination results has been exceptional. At GCSE, 76% of pupils achieved A-star to C grades in five or more GCSE examinations, including English and maths, which with 88.4% of pupils achieving five A star to C grades, and a total of 11 pupils achieving nine straight A or A star grades. Achievement like this increases life opportunities to access the next step, be that through further education or meaningful employment. At A level, the story is no less impressive. The number of pupils attaining the top grades, A star to C, has increased again this year to 85%. Overall, the pass rate at A-level was 100%. In total, 16 pupils achieved straight A or A-star grades. Whilst across the province, 50.8% of all grades awarded were at A-star and A-grade, at the high school, those results were 59.2% in this top category, putting us well ahead of the Northern Ireland average. Our results have consecutively increased for nine years. And these results clearly demonstrate that the high school is the key destination for those who aspire to achieve outstanding results at both GCSE and A-level. Aside from results, the development of our school has continued, and I want to provide an insight to some of those developments. 
During the year, we had the privilege of welcoming the Minister of Education, Peter Weir. He had the opportunity to meet students and to hear about the excellent achievements and accomplishments of our school, as well as the plans and future developments of the school. During lockdown, pupils experienced a variety of different approaches to lessons, as well as virtual science clubs, volcano cakes, uh, the reading of interesting uh, resources, including fitness challenges and other challenges such as reading. We've all been kept on our toes. In the sporting field, Nick Griggs had an incredible summer of athletics. Our talented 16-year-old runner traveled to Dublin in June to compete in the under-20 Irish Championships at 3,000 metres. He not only won the title, but also set a new Irish under-18 record and British under-17 record in the process. This time allowed Nick to represent Ireland at the under-23 European Championships, which took place in July in Estonia. Again, Nick ran an outstanding race, powering down the finishing straight to win the gold medal. Max Anderson, our head boy, represented the Irish under-19 hockey team, which played in the Home Nations tournament against Scotland, England and Wales. Max played a pivotal role in the team and they came second overall. Max and Euron Cruikshank both played for the Ulster under-18 team, which played a series of matches against Wales and Scotland. The highlight of their programme was participating in the UK Schools Games, which were played in Loughborough in September. Here they played against a very strong English, Scottish and Welsh teams, where they maintained an impressive unbeaten record to claim the gold medal. Mark Cuddy has been selected for the Ulster under-16 team and they played a series of matches against their counterparts from Wales and Scotland. Now, whilst we are very proud of the successes of our current pupils, we are also proud of the recent successes of past pupils. Many will be aware that Ian Sloan and David Ames played for Great Britain's men's hockey team at the Tokyo Olympics this summer, which is an incredible achievement. Jacqueline Burns, the Northern Ireland goalkeeper for ladies football, has also seen great success on the international stage too. And Stuart Dallas won three significant awards last season for Leeds United. Moving on to other successes within the school. Last year, two Year 11 teams from the Agriculture Club engaged in the or, and, beg your pardon, entered the prestigious Aberdeen Angus Youth Challenge. This competition seeks to encourage pupils to investigate the impact and benefits of agriculture to Northern Ireland society, economy and environment. With a prize of five calves to rear, both of our groups did exceptionally well. However, it was William Hamilton, John Mark McRae and Ben Smyton who brought home the beef. And the boys are now focused on rearing their calves to get the best possible return and completing a parallel investigation into the sustainability of farming. We congratulate these boys and look forward to seeing their progress through Facebook and Instagram pages. At the end of the last academic year, many departments creatively developed the curriculum to enable pupils to experience different aspects of learning. The creative curriculum saw departments take on varied and different activities to enhance and deepen learning. Pupils had the opportunity for local history and RE visits, painting of local landscapes and nature, creative writing, treasure hunts in the target language, careers activity days, hockey taster sessions, rugby blitz. Scripture Union has also been busy with a new Facebook page supported by Mr. Stewart with up to 9,000 views. This year also saw the inaugural successful Cookstown High School's Got Talent show. And we were very impressed with all of the young people that participated in that event. Three categories. The Cookstown's Got a Champion was Theo Thompson, the rising star, Catherine Harkness, and the most entertaining act, the B-Tech Boys. And we look forward to another talent show this year, which will provide staff with the opportunity and to have more time to practice in advance of their submission. Helping those less fortunate than ourselves is a key feature of our ethos. And this year has been no, success, uh, no exception. 
Charity fundraising has continued with the Learning Support Centre, raising over 1,500 for Paul's legacy, as well as the work that Mrs McFlynn and Mrs Johnson carried out to raise almost £900 for children in need. This year, pupils have already commenced work with the Christmas shoebox appeal for disadvantaged children across the world. As we embark upon this new year, it has been wonderful to see our co-curricular activities recommencing with drama, drama clubs in readiness for our school production, hockey, rugby on our fabulous new rugby pitch, badminton, netball, science, script union, IT and music clubs. We're delighted to have another record number of pupil applications in year eight. And with increasing numbers, we have had the joy of recruiting new staff to meet the need of additional classes. This is a real testament to the student care, academic and wider provision and successful outcomes for both our grammar and secondary school pupils. The school refurbishment and enhancement program around the school continues. It is important that our young people and teachers have an environment and resources which are attractive and fit for purpose, using facilities which are state of the art so that they can make the most of the educational opportunities to achieve. Last year, we've been able to purchase new ICT equipment, 25 clever touch boards, and also a beautiful new seating area with the help of the school fund. Your support and help through the school fund is hugely appreciated as school budgets are not adequate enough to provide a 21st century educational environment or experience. Please continue to support us in our endeavour to educate our young people to the highest educational standards with enhancing and enriching experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm constantly amazed at how much our young people and staff can fit into a year. And I realise I haven't done them all justice this afternoon, but I am immensely proud to be the principal at the high school, and I hope you can see why. I would like to finish with a word to all of our students, whether you have just started or if you're in your seventh year. I hope that your time at the high school will be enjoyable, fulfilled and successful. My hope is that you will flourish in your character and achieve beyond your own expectations that you will see the importance of the key role that you play in positively shaping the future of our community and wider community. We have a school that we can be proud of. And as each of us give of our best, our school becomes stronger in higher standards, providing more opportunity and success for all pupils and contributing to a very secure future. Thank you for the privilege of your company. So now for the distribution of awards. And if we begin, please, with year eight. Normally in our normal service, we would be allowed to have our applause, but we'll hold our applause, please, until the end of each year group. Year eight will receive prizes this afternoon for their achievement and progress in each of their classes. And we'll begin with first place prizes. Alex Campbell. Caitlin Hood. Rosie Millington. Harry Waters. Leah Winery. Aaron Wiley and Catherine Harkness. 
Second prizes are awarded to Chloe Blair, Zara Booth, In absentia is Alex McKenna, Freya Mills, Evelina Soldatinkova, Melissa Vasilake, and third place prizes for Emma Cahoon, Pippa Coulter, Callum Crichton, Justin Dallas, Annabelle Davidson, and Tyler Gillis. That concludes the Year 8 presentations. Our year nine prize winners for achievement and progress, a first place prize for Matt Barrett. Alfie Frost. Daniel Kelly. Andrew Montgomery. Isamora Moray. and William Graham. Second prizes are awarded to Joel Ambrose, Timothy Johnson, Alfie McFarland, Amy Stewart in absentia, and Raphael Finkestein. Our third prize winners are Martin Bofels, Jessica Blair in absentia, Andrea Co-Fernandez, Laura Frizzell in absentia, and Jake McAllister. And that concludes the year nine prize winners. Year 10 prizes for achievement and progress. First place prize for Judy Bean. Rachel Brown. Sophie Dornan. Eloise Ruddle. Sophie Skinner. Vladimir Kuna and second place prizes Sarah Brown, Jasmine Chan, Ethan Forsyth, Anna Miller. and Kian Quinn. Third place prizes go to Katie Abernethy, Rachel Dickey, Rachel Farr, Matthew Pitts in absentia, and Ryan Taylor. And this concludes our year 10 prize winners.
I'm delighted to present this afternoon the following subject prizes for excellent achievement in a range of subjects in year 11. These prizes represent hard work, dedication, and a personal commitment to excellence. Congratulations to you all on this achievement. The prize winners are Megan Bell, Katie Kennedy, Adam McGowan, Nicole Badger, Emma McAdoo, Michael Winkenstein, Alexander Ferguson in absentia, Ella Jane McCulloch, Jessica Espy, Molly Graham, Matthew McComb in absentia, Ellie Purvis, Ben Smyton, Chloe Tom in absentia, Tom Wright, Reese Brisbane in absentia, Mark Carson, Molly Carson, Tegan Carson, Timothy Clark, Emma Dunseith, Andrew Ferguson in absentia, Glenn Gillis in absentia, Jacob Gurley, Thomas Graham, Luke Haycock, Dylan Henry in absentia, Corday Kane, Leah Kenny, Zara Little, Abby McCurgan, Alex Riley, Leah Smith, and Amy Wiley. This concludes Year 11 prize winners. Well done. It is a privilege to present the following prizes to our Year 12 pupils. Again, these prizes are a testament to the tenacity and determination of our pupils. The following pupils grasped all opportunities available to them and very well done to you all. The prize winners are Reese Greaves, Louise Bowden, Christine Dallas, Kate Brown, Ruben Hamilton, Ella Tom, Jay Singh Basra, Louise Bleaks in absentia, Adam Brimage, Zoe Carson, Noah Doris in absentia, Nathan Gilmartin, Nicholas Griggs, Nicole Hamkiewicz, Anna McGaw, Jody O'Neill, Rachel Steenson in absentia, Kevin Taylor, Lydia Badger, Alan Brooks, Serena Burton, Hugo Cleary McGuffin, Matthew Collins in absentia, Cody Cowden in absentia, Hannah Gillis, Ryan Glendinning in absentia, Julianne Hardy, Ben McAdoo in absentia, Samuel McAllister, 
Holly Purvis. Lucy Purvis. Kiva Smith. CJ Stewart in absentia. Olivia Thompson. And Charlie Witten. This concludes the Year 12 subject prizes. The following prizes are awarded for high achievement at GCSE level and for pupils who, who have achieved five or more A grades. Again, recognizing tremendous effort, dedication across a range of subjects. The prize winners are Lydia Badger, Louise Bowden, Katie Bowman, Kate Brown, Christine Dallas, Danielle Ferguson, Reese Greaves, Nicholas Griggs, Ruben Hamilton, Holly Purvis, Rachel Reed, Olivia Thompson, Charlie Witten, Jay Singh Basra, Serena Burton, Hannah Gillis, Nicole Hamchevich, Ellen Harkness, Nathan Pitts, Matthew Stinson, Matthew Bloomer, Lauren Brimage, Mark Cuddy, Claudia Hill, Natalie Johnson, Samuel McAllister, Emily Miller, Jody O'Neill, Kiva Smith, Adam Brimage, Ewan Cruikshank, Adriana Davis in absentia, Ewan Mitchell, Taylor Robb, Rachel Steenson in absentia, Abby Wiley, Antons Bogdanovs, Anna McGaw, Lucy Purvis, Kevin Taylor, Alan Brooks, Zoe Carson, Louise Martin, and Matthew McCann. A very well done to all, and here ends the GCSE Prizes. Our next set of prizes awarded recognize and celebrate high achievement at AS level. Again, these prizes recognize the incredible effort and diligence of our pupils, and it is a pleasure now to be able to acknowledge the following individual successes. The prize winners are Ellie Anderson, Emily Davidson, Neil McKay, Julie Kane, Katie Purvis, Ellie Simpson,
Gemma Shields. Faith Tom. Alicia Hunter. Goda Yaknaliate. Katie Anderson. Daniel Booth. Karis Cahoon. Ellen Glasgow. Hannah Glasgow. Chelsea Greer. Leah Manili. Gemma McGowan. Ellie McKay. Chloe McKernan. Hannah McKernan. Caleb Mills in absentia. Ellie Robinson. James Taylor. Jan Wilkinson. And Ella Young. Here end the year 13 prizes. The prizes awarded celebrate high achievement at A level. I would like to congratulate, congratulate you all in your successes at A level and also in level three BTEC subjects. We would like to take this opportunity to wish you all well, either for university apprenticeships or the world of work. The prize winners for year 14 achievement are Gary Bell, Alice Bowden, Catherine Carson, Rebecca Collins, Calvin Davidson, Bobby Kane. Charlotte Stewart, and Jimmy Smyton. Now many of the pupils in our booklet have already started their higher education and we wish them well. Here ends the year 14 prizes. We now move on to our sports prizes. It's an honor to present the following sports prizes. Firstly, I would like to congrat congratulate our boys hockey representatives. The following boys have represented both Ulster and Ireland. They've been great ambassadors, not only for our school, but also for our country. The boys hockey representatives are Max Anderson, who has represented the under 18s for Ulster and under 19s for Ireland. And Ewan Cruikshank, who has represented Ulster under 18. And Mark Cuddy, who has represented Ulster under 16. I would now like to pay tribute to a very talented, young and modest man who has represented Ireland in Estonia this summer. He's brought home the gold medal and Nick was recently honoured by Mid-Ulster Council. And I also believe that he has been socialising with Mo Farah. So the sports prizes for athletics goes to the one and only Nicholas Griggs. Well done.
Our next awards go to outstanding the outstanding contribution to school sport. Junior school, Rachel Brown. Max Wiley. Our other prizes for a contribution to school sport for the senior school go to Charlotte Stewart. And Gary Bell. Our final prize from me this afternoon go to our finalists for the ABP Angus Youth Challenge. Now, Miss Evans have, has mentioned those who won the calves, and I would like to bring them up here now. So, John Mark McRae and William, William Hamilton in absentia. And here end the sports prizes. And for our final category of awards this afternoon, we're going to present some special awards. Of course, you're all special prize winners, but the ones who will receive these cups and trophies this afternoon will begin with the Houston Memorial Salver, which will be for Catherine Carson. The Betty Young Memorial Award for Joshua Glendinning in Absentia. RJ Allen Cup for Best Overall Performance at A Level is jointly presented to Gary Bell and Nicole Wilson in Absentia. The George Gurley Fine Art Award, Nicole Hamchevich. The Patricia Compton Award for A-Level Biology is jointly awarded to Alice Bowden and Catherine Carson. Also for Catherine, she's going to also receive the Precop Award for High Achievement in Chemistry at A-Level. The Wilfred Young Cup for A-Level English Literature is presented to Ava Cleary McGuffin in Absentia. The Frida Somerville Memorial Cup for A-Level Geography, Lauren Buchanan in Absentia. The A.J. Marsh Cup for A-Level History, Ava Cleary McGuffin and Alan Chan in Absentia. The Home Economics Cup jointly presented to Jessica Lindsay in Absentia, Catherine Carson and Rebecca Collins. 
And the H.W. Young Cup for Proficiency in Languages, Emily Davidson. The Departmental Shield for A-Level Religious Studies, Alice Bowden. The Walton Award for Best Performance in A-Level Sciences goes to Calvin Davidson. The Kulna Frankie Cup for Best Overall Performance in Lower Sixth is jointly awarded to Emily Davidson and Neil Mackay. The Viola Busby Cup for High Achievement in Business Studies is awarded to Michael Winkenstein. The Helen Adams Cup for Outstanding Contribution to Music, Emily Miller. The J. Allen Cup for Best Overall Performance at GCSE Boys, Reese Greaves. The Morrison Memorial Cup for Best Overall Performance at GCSE Girls, Louise Bowden. The Ferguson Award for Art and Design at GCSE, Ella Tom. The Abbott Jubilee Jug for Best Performance in GCSE History, J. Singh Basra. The McRae Award for Further Mathematics, Reese Greaves. The McNeil Cup for High Achievement in Mathematics, Sophie Dornan. The Stratton Salver for High Achievement in Modern Languages, Serena Burton. The Mita Bell Cup for High Performance in Music at GCSE is jointly awarded to Katie Bowman and Adam Brimage. The Barclay Cup for Best Performance in Physical Education at GCSE goes to both Holly Purvis and Nicholas Griggs. The Booth Cup 
for Achievement in GCSE Religious Studies is jointly awarded to Louise Bowden and Reuben Hamilton. The Prize for High Achievement in GCSE Science, Rhys Greaves. Cookstown Community Training Services Cup for Technology is awarded to Reuben Hamilton. The Prize for High Achievement in the Vocational Education Programme is awarded to Nathan Gilmartin. The Anne Haycock Cup for Outstanding Achievement in Year 8 is awarded to Anna Neville. The Ford Cup for Special Merit is presented this afternoon to Vladimir Kuna. The Geoffrey Mullen Memorial Cup is presented to Rhys McIntyre. The Reverend E. Morrison Prizes for Best Middle School Performances go to Jodie Bean, Rachel Brown and Sophie Skinner. The Making a Difference Award, presented from the Bank of Ireland, is presented this afternoon to Catherine Carson and James Seymour in absentia. <laughs> Speaking of running out of space on mantelpieces, the Probus Cup for Outstanding Achievement in Sport, Nicholas Griggs. The J.E. Donachy Cup for Field Events in Athletics, Lucy McLenahan. The Campbell Cup for Achievement in Netball, Charlotte Stewart. The Katrina Johnson Award for High Achievement in GCSE Geography, Louise Bowden. The Eakin Cup for English Literature at GCSE goes to Hannah Gillis. And the PG Brisbane Rose Bowl for High Performance in Technology is presented to Charlotte Stewart. And that concludes our awards distribution for this afternoon. Thank you very much for everyone.
Principal Evans, governors, Reverend Greer, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's an honor to be back at the high school to celebrate your successes at today's prize giving ceremony. I was a pupil here 35 years ago and life was very different then. We did not have internet, no Instagram, no TikTok, no WhatsApp, and mobile phones hadn't been invented. For some of you, that probably sounds unbelievable. Never mind Netflix, our black and white television only had three channels. And when you switched it on, it took five minutes to warm up before the picture appeared. Apart from the single screen cinema on Fair Hill, the highlight of the week was the social school club held on Tuesday evenings. Life was simpler then. Mr. Young was the principal. My tie was the same as yours. And politically, Northern Ireland was a very different place. I attended the high school at the same time as many of your parents and still know some of them. 35 years ago, I was sitting where you are now and the guest speaker told my friends and I that our time at the high school would be the best years of our lives. My friends and I, we were in complete shock. Can you imagine being told that your time at school would be the best of your life? Boys and girls, I can tell you now that our respected friend was right. Enjoy every minute you spend at this wonderful school. There will be plenty of time to worry about mortgages, bills, and pension plans later in life. Grasp every opportunity in your short time here, whether it be academically in the classroom, on the sports pitch, in the music rooms, or the lunchtime clubs. When I was a pupil here, Cookstown was a much smaller town with a population of less than 10,000 people. We lived at the edge of town where there was no light pollution and I used to stargaze at night. There were amazing views of the constellations, the Milky Way, and occasionally the Northern Lights. Several times I even saw an orbiting satellite. And as a young child, I was totally mesmerized and captivated. I knew then what I wanted to do with my life. I told my parents, when, when I grew up, I want to build spacecraft. That was my dream. And today, I am fortunate enough to be living my dream, running my own space company. Most people don't enjoy going back to work on a Monday morning after a fun weekend. Me, I can't wait to get back to work. Today, space technology and satellites are providing solutions to some of humanity's greatest challenges. Climate change, digital divide, food sustainability, disaster management, COVID-19, as well as providing global communication. It's a very cool and cutting edge industry. And the government wants to create 
100,000 new jobs in the space industry by 2030. Perhaps this could be a future career for you to consider. Today, for the first time in our lives, you can apply online to become an astronaut. Perhaps one of you will explore outer space, the moon, Mars, and share your experiences here as guest speaker at a future prize giving day. Boys and girls, dreams are not something you do when you sleep. Your dreams for the future should prevent you from getting to sleep. Every one of you can be what you want to be. Work and play hard during your short time here at this wonderful school. I was born in 1968, just before man first landed on the moon. Neil Armstrong's iconic words were, that's one small step for man, that's one giant leap for mankind. Boys and girls, Cookstown High School is your first small step in your career. And the best way for you to predict your future is for you to create your future. What will the world be like in 35 years' time? Most of you will never learn to drive as cars will be self-driving. Rather than holidaying in Spain or the United States, you may choose to be space tourists and have a vacation on the moon or Mars. For some of you, perhaps the most important question you might be asking yourself right now is, what version of iPhone will you own then? In the future, one of you will be standing here as guest speaker and saying to the next generation of high school pupils, or maybe your own children, 35 years ago, some short guy with a suntan came to the high school and told us we can achieve our dreams and be whatever we want by working hard. Boys and girls, there will be many setbacks in your journey, many failures, Sweat, tears, maybe even blood. At the times, it will be stressful and scary. But you must never, ever give up on your dreams, as they lie on the other side of fear. I feel very blessed that I've been able to live my dream and do a job that I love and feel very passionate about. So can you, boys and girls. Finally, I'd like to congratulate all of today's recipients. Thank Principal Evans and the governors for inviting me back to my school and ask them to continue today's prize giving ceremony. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say a big thanks on behalf of everyone to Dr. Razan. That was brilliant, some very inspiring words there. Uh, I'm sure I can uh, speak on behalf of everyone when I say that we've learned something very valuable here today from that. Uh, Julie, our head girl, would like to give you a present as a thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. Very kind. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you indeed to everyone who has taken part today. We're near the end of our uh, time of prize day. We're going to finish off with a, a prayer again and then the singing of the school anthem. Now you'll find that uh, inside the, the back cover of your program.
Uh, so if you can be getting that ready, we'll be standing to sing that in a moment. But first of all, uh, we join together once more in prayer. A prayer of thanksgiving. We give you thanks, Lord God, for those who, for, for those through whose vision, faith, and generosity this school was founded, and for all who in later years have given their energies and resources to further the ideals of its founders. We thank you for men and women of learning who, as teachers or students, have advanced the frontiers of knowledge and given service to their fellow men in our nation and in other parts of the world for the blessings of life itself, for the skills of mind and hand, and for the joy of search for truth. Accept, O God, this our thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing the anthem, Lead me, Lord, lead me in thy righteousness. I've told us to be sung for us. We can stand. Okay, but okay, but we're going to hear it. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.